so on the last episode of Depresso Plays Gogo Nippon, my first time in Japan, we had a meal in some kind of cheap restaurant. So where are we now? We have the lovely Matoko with her big goofy ears and tiny hat, which is attached by some kind of super glue. Uh, okay then, next up, wait, Motoko? Uh huh, what is, what is that? What is what? That, that thing, it's over there. Is there a monster? Is there a giant mon- <laughs> We're in Japan, and it's still too much to ask to have a giant monster attack. Really? That giant tower, what is the giant tower? It's called the Tokyo Sky Tree. Uh, that's a weird name. It's a broadcast tower that provides a digital signal for all the Tokyo. Yeah, like, okay, blah, blah, blah. It's a broadcast signal, yes, until recently. Uh, Tokyo Tower played the role, but now there are so many tall buildings in Tokyo that they interfere with the broadcast waves. Wow. So, Japan actually listened to the people who were bending their coat hanger aerials out of their window and uh, built this giant sky tree. The sky tree is supposed to remedy that, though it's still under construction. And you can see the three cranes there. Or as we call them in Scotland, crans. Uh, <laughs> literally nobody is gonna get that joke. Uh, wait a minute, that thing is not even finished yet. That's right. When it's finished, it will be 634 meters tall, the tallest broadcast tower in the world. As man-made structures go, it will only rank second after the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Wow. It's it's like that is like stupidly tall, like it's almost as tall as Wiz Khalifa, uh, the second tallest building in the world, and it's right next to Asakusa. Asakusa has the two tallest mountains in the world. Uh, in her sweater, it is strange, isn't it, to have such a modern structure visible amidst these traditional buildings? No kidding. You know, like, in Britain, we have, like, wind farms, and we're building these wind turbines, and a lot of people think, oh, they look ugly, and they're spoiling the countryside. Like, look at Japan, they have these traditional buildings, and they just plant this, the second tallest building in the world, like a giant white tower that looks a little bit like, I don't know, a giant syringe dodo thing, and they don't even care that it spoils the tourist pictures of Japan because they are so modern and they can actually see the future. Whereas in Scotland we have like old people saying oh these wind farms they're making the countryside look horrible. If we don't build the wind farms and build renewable energy there won't be a fucking countryside left. Yeah so that's my little rant on that. So it's nice to see that Japan at least has their brains firmly in their heads and their heads firmly screwed on to their shoulders and the knee bone connected to the leg bone, the leg bone connected to the hip bone okay, no, <laughs> there won't be any more singing on this channel or maybe there will uh, the other broadcast tower, Tokyo Tower is a popular sightseeing spot in the city, we should go there too if we have the time I think we should go there let's visit all of the towers and then maybe later Motoko you can visit the big tower in my pants <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stop making sexual jokes about Motoko because she's clearly a young girl and she's nice enough to invite me into her country and we should be respectful of her and respectful of her giant tits. Well, that makes a full day of sightseeing. Makoto Misaki's Tokyo tour will now be coming to an end. I would like to come in her and... <laughs> That's the last one, I promise. I promise that is the last one about Motoko. The next one are all going to be about her, about her sister, Akira. Uh, this is our last sightseeing spot. Yeah. Now we're here. The question. Here's the question. What kind of place do you think this is? What could it be? It just seems like your average everyday building. Oh, the building in the background. Uh, he says it looks like a gymnasium. I think this is maybe like some kind of bath house like I don't, I don't know like it has a like a kind of rusty water beaten kind of look I don't know it's called a 
Ryo Goku. Ryo Goku. Goku Gigan. Ryo Goku. Goku Gigan. Goku Gigan. Yeah. Isn't it's the promised land of all sumo? Sumo? You mean like sumo wrestlers? Yes, I think that's right. I would like to wrestle with Motoko's sumos. <laughs> oh shit, wrong button. Um, sumo has a long history. Uh, some people say it goes back at least 2,000 years. Oh, man, that must be one old sumo wrestler. 2,000 years old. Yes, long ago it was a ritual to honor the gods by eating a lot of fat and then like running into naked men. Have you seen it? They clap their hands in the ring and stomp their feet. It's all a ritual carried over from ancient times. Yeah, I've seen that on TV. Now I don't know, but maybe like twice in my life have I switched on the TV and seen sumo wrestling. And I am I am old as balls. I am old. Like I am, let me tell you, I am so old that the last time I played a video game I fell off my dinosaur. I see. I did always wonder why they moved in such a strange way. Yeah, they kind of shuffle. Sumo wrestlers. I'm doing a shuffling motion in my chair. You can't see it. Maybe I'll get a webcam one day. But I'm doing like a little sumo shuffle. It's quite uh, attractive. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to know the reason why they do the stupid moves. Well, not stupid, but you know. Sumo wrestlers are known as Rikishi. Rikishi sumo competitions. Sumo competitions between Rikishi is called Ozumo. Six Ozumo competitions take place every year. Three of them are held at the Ryogoku Kokugigan. Three? You mean half of them? That's right. The Ozumo at the Kokugigan take place in January, May, and September, and they last at least two for two weeks. If you want to come, it's best to buy tickets in advance, on the internet, or at a travel agency. Too bad it's not going on while I'm here. But if I come back later, I'll make sure to check it out. I think it would be quite fun to dress up in sumo outfits and slap around Makoto and, you know, grapple her into the ground and put her in some kind of holds. Like, uh, yeah. I think that'd be great. I'd love to, like, Dust off my palms on a uh, Mikoto sumo ring, uh, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna get thrown off of YouTube, dude. Oh, and right next to the Koku Gigan, go Koku Koku Gikan is the Edo Tokyo Museum. It teaches people about the history of Tokyo. Do you want? Can you hear my chair squeaking when I adjust my my balls? Uh, do you want to go in and learn a bit about how Tokyo evolved since the era of the samurai? Well, wait a minute. In the last two episodes ago, uh, Motoko informed us that samurai uh, were around right up until, and I believe she said the 18th century, which would be like 17... maybe as late as 1790-1780. So it has only been well, you know, like about 230 years, roughly, like give or take 20 years either side, roughly 200 to like 250 years since the samurai have existed. So, if it's history from the end of the samurai, that's like pretty modern history. Like, that's like steam engines, uh, machine guns, uh, Mazdas, and Kawasaki's. Um, yeah. Well, we've already been to the museum and it costs four euros and twenty six. Let's look at this again. Look at this. Look, look. Uh, do you want to go in and learn a bit about Tokyo? Uh, how Tokyo has evolved since the samurai era? Sure, as long as we're here, let's do it. Wow, the Edo Tokyo Museum. Wait, wait. Wow, the Edo Tokyo Museum was really fun. Really? Sure, as long as we're here to. Wow, it was really fun. If this is how the sex scenes in this game go, this is gonna be terrible. Seeing Tokyo now, <laughs> like, come on, like, one message, that's all I get. I don't even get to go in and have a look at all the stuff. 
Oh, what a jip. Seeing Tokyo nowadays, it's hard to imagine it looked like that 200 years ago. Yeah, well, I guess concrete, you know, instead of making stuff out of bamboo. Uh, I really learned a lot. I didn't learn anything because you didn't show me the inside of the museum. So Motoko learned something too, to tell you the truth. That's the first time I've been to the museum myself. That's true. Like, I live near quite a few museums. Uh, there's the Edinburgh Museum and the Glasgow Museum. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's some other stuff, like there's uh, other science places. I've never been there. Like, I live next to like a secret World War bunker thing. I've never ever been there, but the, probably the first place that tourists go would be like straight to that place. So it's kind of like, yeah, why don't you guys, okay, my one or two viewers that actually watch my videos consistently, why don't you guys tell me about which museums you live nearby to in the comments section and let's start a dialogue. I always hate when people in their videos say things like this, but I'm going to say it. Yeah, so if you live next to anything that's pretty cool, why don't you leave a little comment in the description? And the next time we'll be playing even more Gogo Nippon. This is the end of this episode. Uh, purely for convenience sake, I want to make them shorter because uh, I have a new job uh, and it kind of sucks ass. So, yeah. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, tweet my tweets, follow me on the Twitteroo, follow me on Twitch, and you'll get an email alert whenever I start streaming. Most likely I'll be streaming. Hmm. Probably going to be League of Legends, League of Legends, not League of Legends, or Lego Leelands. I'm going to be playing Legolas, Legolas uh, Legos on Twitch, yeah, so be sure to do that and stuff.